we are not going to get to human level AI by just scaling up LLMs. This is just not going to happen, okay? That's your perspective. There's no way, okay? Absolutely no way. Um, and, and whatever you can hear from some of my uh, more adventurous colleagues, uh, <laughs> it's not going to happen within the next two years. There's absolutely no way in hell to, you know, pardon my French, um, the, you know, the idea that we're, we're going to have, you know, a country of genius in the data center, that's complete BS, right? There's absolutely no way. What we're going to have maybe is systems that are trained on sufficiently large amounts of data that any question that any reasonable person may ask will, will find an answer through those systems. And it would feel like you have, you know, a PhD sitting next to you, but it's not a PhD you have next to you. It's, uh, you know, a, a system with uh, a gigantic uh, memory and retrieval ability, not, not a system that can invent uh, solutions to, uh, to new problems, um, which is really what a, a PhD is. Okay, this is That's actually connected. whole connect deal. It's, it's, you know, connected to this post that... Uh, uh, Thomas, Thomas Wolf uh, uh, made that uh, um, you, 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 you inventing new things, you know, requires uh, uh, the, the a type of, uh, of skill and abilities that uh, you're not going to get from from uh, from LLMs. So, um, so there's a big question, which is. The investment that is being done now is not done for tomorrow. It's not. It's, it's done for you know the next few years, and most of the investment, at least for from the meta side, is investment in uh, infrastructure for inference. Okay, so let's imagine that by the end of the year, which is really the plan at Meta, we have one billion users of Meta AI through smart glasses, you know, a standalone app, and and whatever. Um, you got to serve those people, and that's a lot of computation. So that's why you need, you know, a lot of investment in infrastructure to be able to scale this up and, you know, build it up over months or, or years. Um, and so that, you know, that's where most of the money is going, um, uh, at least on, on, you know, on the side of companies like 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 Meta and Microsoft and and, and Google and potentially Amazon. Um, then there is, so this is just operations essentially. Now, is there going to be the, the market for, um, you know, 1 billion people using those things regularly, even if there is no change of paradigm? And the answer is probably yes. So, you know, even if the revolution of a new paradigm doesn't come, you know, within three years, this infrastructure is going to be used. There's, there's very little question about that. Okay, so it's a good investment. And it takes so long to set up, you know, data centers and all that stuff that you need to, to get started now and plan for, you know, progress to be continuous uh, so that, uh, you know, eventually the investment is, uh, is justified. But you can't afford not to do it, right? Because, right. Um, because that would be too much of a, of a risk to take if you have the cash. But let's go back to what you said. The stuff today is still deeply flawed. And there have been questions about whether it's going to be used. Now, Meta is making this consumer bet, right? The consumers want to use the AI. That makes sense. OpenAI has 400 million users of ChatGPT. The Meta has three, four billion. I mean, basically, if Six. you have a phone well, on Earth. We have three, three point something yeah. billion uh, users, uh, 600 million users of Meta AI. Right. Okay. So more than ChatGPT. Yeah, but, they, they, but it's not used as much. That's right. So the users are not as intense. As active. But basically, the idea that, that Meta can get to a billion consumer users, yeah. that seems reasonable. But the thing is, a lot of this investment has been made with the idea that this will be useful to enterprises, uh, not just a consumer app. And there's a problem because, like we've been talking about, it's not good enough yet. Uh, you look at deep research. This is something Ben Dick-Devins has brought up. Deep research is pretty good. But it might only get you 95% of the way there, and maybe 5% of it hallucinates. So if you have a 100-page research report and 5% of it is wrong and you don't know what 5%, that's a, that's a problem. And similarly, in, in enterprises today, all every enterprise is trying to figure out how to make uh, AI useful to them, uh, generative AI useful to them, and other types of AI. Uh, but only 10% or 20% maybe of proof of concepts make it out the door into production because they're, it's either too expensive or it's fallible. So if this is, if we are getting to the top here, uh, what do you anticipate is going to happen with, uh, with everything that's, that, that has been 
pushed in the anticipation that it is going to get even better from here. Well, so again, it's a question of the timeline, right? When when are those systems going to become sufficiently reliable and intelligent so that the deployment is made easier? Um, but but you know, I, I mean, this this situation you're describing that you know beyond the impressive demos, actually deploying systems that are reliable is where things tend to falter in in the use of computers and technologies and particularly AI. This is not you. Um, it's it's basically, um, you know, why we we had super impressive, you know, autonomous driving demos ten years ago, um, but we still don't have level five self driving cars, right? Um, it's the last mile that's really difficult, uh, so to speak, uh, for cars. <laughs> you know, it's uh, you know the I last see what you did there, the yeah. last few. <laughs> Uh, that was not deliberate. Uh, <laughs> the, the you know the last few few percent of, of reliability, which makes a system uh, practical, um, and how you integrate it with sort of existing systems and 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 blah blah blah, and you know how it makes uh, users of it more efficient, if if you want, or more uh, reliable, or or whatever. Um, that's where that's where it's, that's where it's difficult, um, and. You know, this is why uh, if we take if we go back several several years and we look what happened with uh, IBM Watson, okay. So Watson was going to be the thing that, you know, IBM was was going to push and generate tons of revenue by by having Watson, uh, you know, learn about medicine and then be deployed in every um, uh, every hospital. And it was basically a complete failure and was sold for parts, right? Um, and cost a lot of money to to IBM, including the CEO. And the what happens is that actually deploying those systems in in situations where they are reliable and and actually help people and don't like hurt the natural conservatism of the of the labor force. Um, this is where things become complicated. We're, we're seeing the same, uh, you know, the process we're seeing now with the difficulty of deploying a yeah, system is not new. It's 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 happened uh, absolutely at all, at all times. This is also why, you know, some some of your listeners perhaps are too young to remember this, but there was a big wave of interest in AI in the 1980s, early 1980s, um, around expert systems, um, and. You know the the hardest job in the 1980s was going to was going to be knowledge engineer, and your job was going to be to sit next to a, an expert and then you know turn the knowledge of the expert into rules and facts that would then be fed to a um, inference engine that would be able to kind of derive new facts and, and answer questions and blah blah blah. Um, big wave of interest. Uh, the Japanese government started a big program called fifth generation computer. The hardware was going to be designed to actually take care of that and blah, blah, blah. You know, mostly mostly a failure. There was kind of, a, 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 you know, the wave of interest kind of died in the, the mid 90s uh, about this. And, and, you know, a few companies were successful, but basically for a narrow set of applications for which you could actually reduce human knowledge to a bunch of rules, and for which um, uh, it was economy, economically feasible to do so. Um, but the, the, the wide-ranging impact on all of uh, society and industry was just not there. And so that's the danger of, uh, of, of AI all the time. Um, I mean, the, the signals are clear that, you know, still um, LLMs uh, with all the bells and whistles actually play an important role, if nothing else, for information retrieval. Uh, you know, most companies uh, want to have some sort of internal uh, experts that know all the internal documents so that any employee can ask any question. We have one at Meta, it's called MetaMate. It's really cool, it's very useful. Yeah, and I'm not suggesting that AI is gonna, that modern AI is not, or modern generative AI is not useful, or uh, I'm, I'm asking purely that there's been a lot of money that's been invested into expecting this stuff to effectively achieve god level capabilities and we both are talking about how like there's you know potentially diminishing returns here and then what happens if there's that timeline mismatch like you mentioned yeah. and um this is the last question I'll ask about it because I feel like we have so much else to cover but I feel like timeline mismatches uh that might be personal to you you and I first spoke 9 years ago which is crazy now, nine years ago. 
uh, uh, and you know about how in the early days you had an idea for how AI should be structured, and you couldn't even get a seat at the conferences. Um, and then eventually, with the right amount of com- when when the right amount of compute came around, those ideas started working, and then the entire AI field took off based off of your idea that you you worked on with uh, Bengio and Hinton. Um, but and a bunch of others and many others. <laughs> Uh, and but you know, for the sake of efficiency, we'll say go look it up. Um, but just talking about those mismatched timelines, when there have been overhyped moments uh, in the AI field, maybe with expert systems that you were just talking about, and they don't pan out the way that people expect, the AI field goes into what's called AI winter. Well, there's a backlash. Yeah, correct. And so if we're gonna, if we are potentially approaching this moment of mismatched timelines, do you fear? that there could be another winter now, given the amount of investment, uh, given the fact that there's going to be potentially diminishing returns with the main way of training these things. And maybe we'll add in the fact that the market is, is the stock market looks like it's going through a bit of a downturn right now. Now, that's a variable, uh, probably the third most important variable of what we're talking about, but it has to factor. So, uh, yeah, I, th- I think, um, I mean, there's certainly uh, a question of timing there. But I think uh, if we try to dig a little bit deeper, um, as I said before, if you think that we're going to get to human-level AI by just training on more data and scaling up LLMs, you're making a mistake. So if you're, if you're an investor and you invest in a company that told you we're going to get to human-level le- AI and PhD level by just, you know, training on more data and with a few tricks, um, I don't know if you're going to use your shirt, but that was probably not a good idea. Um, however, there are ideas about how to uh, go forward and have systems that are capable of doing what what every intelligent animal and, and human are capable of doing and that uh, current AI systems are not capable of doing. And I'm, I'm talking about understanding the physical world, um, having persistent memory, and being able to reason and plan. Those are the four characteristics that, that you know, need to be there. Um, and that requires systems that you know, can acquire common sense, that can learn from uh, natural sensors like video as opposed to just text, just human-produced uh, uh, data. Um, and that's a big challenge. I mean, I've been talking about this for many years now and, uh, and saying this is, this is where the challenge is, this is what we, we have to, uh, to figure out. And, and my group and I have or people working with me and others who, who have listened to me are making progress uh, along along this line uh, of uh, systems that can be trained to understand how the world works on video, for example, systems that can use mental models of how the, world, the physical world works to plan sequences of actions to arrive at a particular goal. So we, we have kind of early results of this kind of systems. Uh, and there are people at DeepMind working on similar things and there are you know, people in various universities working on this. Uh, so... Um, the question is, you know, when is this going to go from uh, interesting research papers uh, demonstrating a, a new capability with a new architecture to, you know, architectures at scale that, you know, are practical for a lot of applications and can find solutions to new problems without being trained to do it, um, etc. And, you know, it, it's not going to happen within the next three years, but it may happen with, you know, between three to five years, something like that. And that's kind of corresponds to, you know, the, the sort of ramp up that we see in, uh, uh, in, in investment. Now, whether other, so, so that, that's the first thing. Now, the, the second thing that's important is that there's not going to be one secret magic bullet that one company or one group of people is going to invent that is going to just solve the problem. Um, it's going to be, a lot of different ideas, a lot of effort, some principles around which to base this that, that some people may, may not subscribe to and will, will go um, in a direction that is, you know, will turn out to be a dead end. Uh, so it, there's not going to be like a day before which there is no AGI and after which we, we have AGI. This is not going to be an event. Um, it's going to be continuous conceptual ideas that as time goes by, are going to be made bigger and to scale and going to work better. And it's not going to come from a single entity. It's going to come from the entire research community across the world. And the people who share their research are going to move faster than the ones that don't. And so if you think that there is some startup somewhere with five people who has discovered the secret of AGI and you should invest five billion in them, 
you're making a huge mistake. 